Romans 8 from verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? What shall we say about the challenges? What shall we say about what we're seeing around us? What shall we say? Our answer is, if God be for us, who can be against us? Let us thank our father this morning. We are confident in his power, in his grace, in his goodness. The same God who delivered us yesterday, he will deliver us today. David, in remembering what God has done, he said, the God who delivered me from the paw of the bear, the God who delivered me from the roaring lion, he will hand over this Goliath Philistine into my hands today. Yes, the same God who delivered us even from our mother's womb, the same God who made sure your mother didn't have a miscarriage, the same God who made sure that the midwives didn't kill you the day you were born, the same God who has been feeding you, shepherding you, watching over you, watching over you until you grew up and became a mother. The same God who saw you through is still seeing you through today. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is consistent. He is reliable. If God be for us, who can be against us? What is it that can trouble us? Yes, we are grateful this morning once again to come into the presence of the King of glory and the Lord of lords. That we are alive this morning is a testimony that God has done it again. Hallelujah to the glorious God. Hallelujah to the mighty one of Israel. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Oh, we bless your name, Father. Oh, we honor you this morning. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be reverenced. You are worthy to be lifted. Blessed be the name of the Lord from everlasting to everlasting. We honor you. We thank you. Blessed be the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, my sisters. You know, thank God. God is uh, elevating my voice from soprano to bass. Um, <laughs> I just thank God that um, you can at least hear me this morning. The Lord is good all the time. Amen. Um, in Romans 8 verse 32, the Bible says about our God, you know, that first of all, let me reread 31 again. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? This is amplified. He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? It says, who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? And that's talking about me and you. It is God who justifies us. It is God who declares us blameless and puts us in a right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? It is Christ Jesus, the one who died for us to pay our penalty. And more than that, who was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God interceding with the father for us. Child of God, three things here. The first one is that there are going to be adversaries like Satan and his agents. But the Bible is saying, if God is on our side, the adversary becomes insignificant. Why? Because God did not spare his only begotten son. He gave his son up to die a cruel death on the cross. And he did that for us. And God is the only judge of the universe. He's the one right now who sits upon the, the courtroom uh, judgment seat of heaven. The courtroom that dominates all other courtrooms in the universe. The chief judge in that courthouse loves you so much that he sent his only son to die for your sins. So when the adversary drags you into the courtroom and he says this morning, I have an accusation against this woman. I have an accusation against this man. He is reporting you to a judge who loves you so much that he sent his own son to die for you. 
And it is this God who is able to justify you and declare you righteous as if you've never sinned through the blood of Jesus. So in other words, the adversary can come with accusations. But the answer will be the same every morning from our father. These ones have been covered by the blood. And then it says, who is able to condemn us? It says only one being in the universe can condemn us. And that being who can condemn us is Christ Jesus, who died to pay for the price of our sins. And then rose again. And he's sitting at the right hand of the father this morning, praying for us. Child of God, we are covered on all sides. Lift up your voice and begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Wherever, wherever there are things that are against you this morning, wherever Satan, because his name is Hashatan, the adversary, the opposer, the one who stands against you, the one who opposes you in a court of law, the one who is against your rights, the anti decos the one who is against your healing, your deliverance, your joy, your peace. He is against you, but God is on your side. Begin to thank him and say, Father, I thank you for your mercies that endure it forever. Father, I thank you this morning that I am saved by the blood, not of works, lest any man should boast. Father, I thank you this morning that you have sent Jesus to die in my place and he has resurrected with newness of life for me, almighty father. Father, I thank you this morning. I worship you this morning. I exalt your name this morning. I give you praise this morning. Father, I thank you. You gave me your son, Jesus. Oh, I am grateful this morning. Jesus, you are the only one who can condemn because whoever does not believe in the son of God is already condemned. But I stand this morning as a believer. I believe in you, son of the living God. I believe in the cross of Calvary. I believe in the price you paid on the cross. And because I believe, I am not condemned. I believe. Jesus has paid the price for my sins in full. And so this morning, we are not condemned this morning. We are not judged because father has put the judgment for our sins on Jesus Christ, our, our redeemer and our savior. Father, we thank you this morning. We worship you this morning that any accusations that are being raised up against our families, against our children, our children's children, our parents, our grandparents, any accusations against our bloodlines are being silenced this morning because Jesus is interceding for us. Any accusations are being silenced by the power in the blood. Whatever evil judgments are being spoken against us, they are overturned by the just judge of the universe, Almighty Father. He is overturning them by reason of the blood of Jesus. Whatever is being said in the corridors of wickedness, it is overturned this morning by the Father who loves us. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us this morning. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, we are grateful this morning that we are the beloved of the Lord. We are the beloved of the Lord. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be with us, whom shall we fear? We come this morning with confidence in the finished work of the cross. We come with confidence in the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. We are confident of this very thing that Father has done it again this morning. This is another opportunity for us to see his goodness in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Just keep your finger there on Romans 8. We'll come back to it. But let's go to Galatians. Galatians um, chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. The Bible says from verse 16. Galatians 2 from verse 16. Yet we know that a man is not justified or placed in right standing with God by works of the law, but only through faith in God's beloved son, Christ Jesus. 
It is only in Jesus that we are justified. It doesn't matter how kind you are, how lovely you are, how wonderful you are, how polite you are, how generous you are. All these things are not the main ingredient. The main ingredient is that we have been justified through faith in God's son, Christ Jesus. When we believe in Jesus, to be justified means God looks at you as if you have never sinned at all. Other people are saying, God, but that woman, you know how she treated me last month. Lord, that man, Lord, that man is horrific. That man's a womanizer. And if that man's given his life to Christ and has put his faith in the cross, God is saying, I don't remember. This person has been justified. I want us to thank him this morning for the gift of justification that no matter, you know, where voices are speaking against you and they are saying, no, this family cannot be so blessed. Their father did this and the other. This family cannot be so blessed. God has justified us. It's not by works. It, the Bible is saying no man is justified by God through works, but it is only through faith in God's beloved son, Christ Jesus. Begin to thank God this morning and say, Father, I thank you for the gift of justification. Justification is like God has made you straight. He put a ruler to your life and he made the crooked path straight. He made you straight. There is no crookedness. There is nothing bent. There is no iniquity. You have been justified. You have been made straight. Father, I thank you for justifying us here. Justifying our families, our spouses, our children, our children's children, our parents, our grandparents, our sisters, our brothers, our nieces, our nephews, all our extended families. Thank you that we are justified in Christ by faith, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the church of God. Wherever, Lord, we are failing, thank you for redeeming and restoring us and justifying us by faith. This morning, we choose to believe the word of God. We choose to believe that we are justified, that we are straightened up. There is no power that can take us to any court. The power in the blood of Jesus has justified us. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Bible says by observing the law, no one will ever be justified. You can observe the 10 commandments. You will not be justified. But it says, if while we seek to be justified in Christ by faith, we ourselves are found to be sinners. Does that make Christ an advocate or promoter of our sin? He says, certainly not. For if I or anyone else should rebuild through word or by practice what I once tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law and its demands on me. Because salvation is provided through the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus. So that from today onwards, I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. That is in him, I shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, by relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Shall we take that declaration this morning? That Father God, we don't want to rebuild anything that we tore down by faith. Anything evil, we refuse to rebuild it. Any personality traits that are not consistent with God, I refuse to rebuild them this morning. I will not rebuild what I tore down. Any kind of sin that I've repented of, that I've renounced, I am not going back there again. I refuse to rebuild what has been torn down in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare this morning I have died to the law I have died to the law and its demands because salvation is provided through the death and resurrection of Christ so that I might live unto God I declare this morning I have been crucified with Christ 
I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ. Rebabuza makuza malega do sufredada lima handelebo kuna na mazekede limba kusabaya Lord I thank you this morning We are crucified with Christ Jesus we live every day by faith You know years ago brethren there was a song that was sung by um Donald Lawrence Donald Lawrence and the Tri City Singers and the song said these nails in my hands and feet these nails in my hands and feet, they hold me up. And you know, sometimes I want to be angry, but these nails will not allow me because I've been crucified with Christ. The nails hold me in check. Sometimes I want to bow down to fear, but the nails on my hands and feet, they hold me up. They don't allow me to be afraid. Sometimes I want to give up, but these nails, because I've been crucified with Christ, I cannot, I'm not just living an ordinary life. I've been crucified with Christ. Child of God, whatever was negative about us, it has been nailed to the cross. Whatever, whether it is sickness, whether it is disease, whether it is failure or whatever it is, it has been nailed to the cross. It has been nailed to the cross. They, we, we, we cannot, we cannot do some things. We cannot, we cannot give up. We cannot be afraid. We cannot be sick all the time because there are nails holding us to the cross. I want you to begin to declare this morning and say the nails, the nails, the nails that crucified Jesus have held there every form of character defect, any failures, they are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Whatever is not of God, it is nailed to the cross. You are nailed to the cross. Any limitations uh, have been nailed to the cross. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I live, I live by the faith of the resurrection. Resurrection. The resurrected Christ. Every day, uh, I am living by faith uh, that the resurrection is speaking. Uh, that the spirit is speaking uh, through my life. Uh, every day, I make up my mind. Uh, I'm going to live by faith. Uh, I will not live by my senses. Uh, I will not live by human intellect. I will not live by my own wisdom every day. I'm going to live by faith, faith in the finished work of the cross. Hallelujah. In Jesus mighty name, we pray. Amen. I want us to nail some more things to the cross this morning. When we go to Colossians 2, Colossians 2, the Bible says about, you know, it, it was talking about what Jesus has done for us and all that. And then it comes to verse 14 and it says, Jesus has blotted out, has canceled the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands which were in force against us. Wherever principalities, powers, the strong men in our family had written evidence that these people, I have a covenant with them. I have a contract with them. Their forefathers, they sold them to me. I have rights to interfere with their lives. They had a certificate of debt and they said they owe me. One day when they needed children, they came to my marine realm and asked for babies. They owe me. I have a certificate of debt. One day when they were sick, they came to my evil altar. They asked for healing. I have a certificate of debt. They owe me. Bible says Jesus has canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal demands. That handwriting and the ordinances that were against us, that were enforced against us, Jesus took them out of the way. He says all those demands which were hostile to us. Can you imagine hostility? Like how Russia perceives Ukraine. These demands are hostile to us. There is hostility against you. Somebody is hostile. They are angry when you are healthy. They are angry when you have money. They are angry when your children are doing well. But whatever their demands, Bible says they have been nailed to the cross. It says this certificate of debt has been set aside. And completely removed by nailing it to the cross. 
I want you this morning, whatever is around you that is not consistent with the blessing of God. Jesus said in John 10, 10, part B, I have come that they might have life and life in abundance. Whatever is not consistent with abundant life in your life, begin to nail it to the cross and say, Lord, this failure, I nail you to the cross. This disfavor, I nail you to the cross. Lord, this unfruitfulness, I nail it to the cross. Whatever is not allowing me to live the life that Jesus died for me to live, I nail you to the cross this morning. Let's nail them to the cross. Whatever it is, uh, Jesus has already died uh, and paid the price. Uh, whatever you are, you certificate of death, you handwriting of ordinances uh, that are against us, uh, that are hostile to us, uh, that are contrary to us, uh, we nail you to the cross. We nail you to the cross. Yes, Lord, uh, poverty, you are nailed to the cross failure you are nailed to the cross diagnosis of life limiting diseases you are nailed to the cross diabetes we nail you to the cross hey heart failure you are nailed to the cross every kind of pain you are nailed to the cross our bone pain physical pain muscular pain pain in the flesh pain in this area pain in the abdomen pain in the back we nail you to the cross this morning whatever is standing against us whatever will not allow us to live an abundant life we nail you to the cross in the mighty name of jesus strange spirits trying to follow our children we nail you to the cross Everything that is not of God, I nail you to the cross. Whatever my heavenly father has not given to me, I nail it to the cross. Whatever is standing against me, Jesus has already died and taken away your power and taken away your authority, taken away your strength, taken away the capacity for you to cause me harm. I nail you to the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sheke lebosia. Sheke alibosia. Masoko roboshaya. Regado sokondolobo. Zikandele lebosia. Ribabu zavakuza maleka suvahanda. That cross of Calvary carries all these things. Uh, they are not our portion. We live by resurrection life. Uh, every other thing uh, that doesn't glorify God. Uh, we nail you to the cross this morning. Rabo sokoto loboshaya. Regado sokondolobosia. Ribabu zamalega do sokoraba. You are nailed to the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we know how sneaky the kingdom of darkness are. Is there anyone in our families who has taken our name somewhere and represented us in an evil covenant? Lord, we renounce and reject this covenant. We declare them nailed to the cross in the name of Jesus. Anyone gone to an evil altar and taken our surname there, taken our names there. We reject it. We renounce it. We refuse it. We nail it to the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, evil agreements, uh, evil trades, uh, evil initiations, uh, evil dedications, uh, we nail all of them to the cross. Shele mahanda, sheke le mandeleba, le ma zendeleba, shele malianda, livra dos sokorobo. In the mighty name of Jesus, anyone trying to initiate any of our children, even in school, through gifts, through chocolate, through sweets. Father, we break that power. We nail it to the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse anything at all that will limit how well we enjoy Christian life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we nail all of them to the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We worship you. We worship you. Ah, Rabba Baba Seke Lebosi. Marogodo Sokora Bashaya. Rege de Seke Telebosi. Rabo Bobo Bosu Catalaba. Regado Socondo Robosi. Masukere Lebo Shakabala Bosi. Regado Socondo Robosi. Masikando Lobo Shekeleba. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because we were crucified with Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. It says, For the love of Christ constrains us. It compels us. It controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, 
we also believe that we have all died to our old life. Christ's love controls us. Christ's love compels us. Christ's love constrains us because we are convinced that one died for all. And because Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. So this morning, you are going to declare over yourself because we are crucified with Christ. Any side of us that doesn't reflect God, it is nailed to the cross and the love of Christ constrains us, compels us. In other words, God has put a restraining order over our personalities so that we cannot express sides that are not consistent with the love of God, with the power of God, with the goodness of God. Anything people know us for that is not consistent with the love of God, we renounce it right now. We give it up because we have been crucified with Christ. We cannot continue in sin so that grace will abound. Let us begin to pray this morning. Father, any side of me that is not consistent with the love of God, any side of me that is not consistent with the kingdom of heaven, the love of God compels me. The love of God controls me. The love of God constrains me because Lord... I have died to my old life. I am not the same. I have died to my old life. Anything, Lord, that is in me that is not consistent with the love of God. I have died to it. The love of God constrains me. The love of God constrains me. The love of God constrains me. The love of God holds me back. Raka soko rabashaya. Regado soko rabasiya. Rabo bobo bobo sikata. Limbrado soko raba. The love of God compels me, controls me, and constrains me. I am controlled by the love of God. I walk in love. I think in love. I sleep thinking about the love of God. I will wake up thinking about the love of God. The love of God controls me, constrains me. It compels me to do the right thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Amen. And then it says, let's go back to Galatians uh, 3. Let's go back to Galatians 3. In Galatians 3, we read 20 that declared that we are crucified with Christ. Now let's go to 21. Galatians 3, 21. We have prayed for our personalities, for our characters. We are compelled by love. The Bible says in verse 21 of Galatians 2, sorry, Galatians 2. I do not ignore. I do not ignore or frustrate or nullify the grace of God. I do not ignore. I do not frustrate. I do not nullify the grace of God. I don't frustrate his amazing and merited favor. For if righteousness comes through observing the law, then Christ died for nothing. Christ died in vain. Christ died needlessly. His suffering and death would have had no purpose whatsoever. And we know that his death had purpose. I want you to pray for yourself. You know what? There is a way sometimes that we can frustrate the grace of God. How do we frustrate the grace of God? The grace of God is available to us every single day, every morning, every afternoon, every night, every hour of the day. The grace is available. But where we refuse to lean on the grace and we want to do it in our own power, we are obviously going to fail, but also we will have frustrated the grace of God. God has asked you and I, to do specific things for him. There are certain assignments he has asked us to do. If we refuse to do the assignment, the grace will not die. The grace will be there, but it will be frustrated. It will be there, but it will have been, you know, nullified as if God is not able to do amazing things. As if the unmerited favor of God cannot open that door. I want us to pray for ourselves that father, first of all, we want to repent for any times that we have frustrated the grace of God, where the grace and help grace is, um, 
you know, not just undeserved favor, but grace is also divine enablement. It is that power of God being made available for us to do what humanly speaking, we might not be able to do in our own power, but by the power of God, we are more than able to do it. Let us pray this morning and say, Lord, I repent for the times I frustrated the grace of God upon my life. Lord, where you have given me assignments and I've not leaned on your grace and I've frustrated the grace, I repent. Where, Lord, in parenting my children, you gave me grace and I frustrated the grace, I repent of it. Lord, as being a mother, being a wife, being a sister, being a daughter, you have given me grace and there are times I'm, I frustrated that grace. I repent of it. I repent, Lord. Lord, in the ministry, in all we do for God, where we have frustrated the grace, Lord, we repent of it. Father, in professional lives, wherever, Lord, we have been working in a professional capacity and are frustrating the grace of God, we repent. Lord, in academia, oh Lord, any of us, our children, ourselves, where Lord, we have frustrated the grace of God, we repent. Father, in every dimension, where I've frustrated the grace of God, where I've ignored the grace of God, where I've acted like the grace is not available and ignored the grace of God. Father, I repent where I've nullified the grace of God. Lord, have mercy upon me this morning. And now this morning, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus and pray for divine restoration to the position where we are living and walking and breathing by grace. That from today, Lord, we take up this decree. I do not frustrate the grace of God. From today, Lord, we declare over ourselves. We proclaim over our families, over our household and say, Lord, as for me and my household, we will not frustrate the grace of God. We will not ignore the grace of God. We will not nullify the grace of God. We will not frustrate the grace of God. As for me and my household, we will live by the grace of God. The grace, the grace, divine enablement, divine empowerment, divine enablement to live a righteous life. Divine enablement uh, to do the works of God uh, in the land of the living. Uh, divine enablement uh, to live out uh, the amazing and merited favor of God. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, today we receive that grace uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Ragado Sokora Babasia. We receive the grace, we receive the grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace is abundant. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is speaking over us. Your grace, your grace is lifting us up. Your grace is bringing divine promotion. Your grace is bringing divine increase, divine enlargement. Your grace is taking us there to the place you prepared for us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let's please go back to Romans 8, Romans 8, and we will take our proclamation from verse 37 onwards. Romans 8 from verse 37 onwards. We are declaring over our lives this morning that grace of God is speaking. We are not going to frustrate the grace. Uh, power of God is at work. Uh, we will see the outcome. We will see the miracles. Uh, we will see the signs and the wonders. Amen. Romans 8, if you are there from verse 37, the Bible says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors and we gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. I want you to declare over yourself, over your spouse, your children, your family members, the church of God, declare whatever comes my way in all these things. Uh, I am more than a conqueror. We are more than conquerors. Uh, we have gained an overwhelming victory through Jesus Christ who loved us so much that he died for us. Lord, in the midst of the diagnosis, uh, I thank you this morning that we are more than conquerors. Uh, we have victory over the diagnosis. Uh, our healing is here in the name of Jesus. Father, in the situation with our children, we are more than conquerors. These children are for signs and for wonders. Uh, yes, uh, these children are the heritage of the Lord. Uh, yes, uh, we will not be ashamed. Uh, they will be able to speak with the enemy at the city gates uh, because your power is on them. We are more than conquerors. 
us. Uh, we have an overwhelming victory in these marriages. Uh, we have victory in our jobs. Uh, we have victory in our businesses. Uh, we have victory in every dimension. Uh, we have victory. We have overwhelming victory. We are more than conquerors uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, in this financial situation, uh, we are more than conquerors. We have victory in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. And then the Bible says from verses 38 to 39, for I am convinced and I continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Child of God, begin to declare this morning, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Whatever it is, it is a created entity. It cannot stop me. I have an unstoppable God. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me. Whatever it is, uh, whatever may come my way, uh, it cannot stop the love of God. The love of God gives me testimonies. The love of God gives me breakthroughs. Uh, the love of God gives me victory. The love of God God gives me a breakthrough uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, nothing, nothing can separate me from God. Whatever comes, it can only lead to the manifestation of the love of God in my life. It can only lead to God showing me his love, showing me his favor, helping me, giving me grace, uh, lifting me up uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I was asking Mami Olanusi yesterday for the meaning of a certain song. This song was coming to my spirit and I didn't know the meaning um, two evenings ago when we were on the 7 p.m. prayer. And, you know, she translated the song for me and told me that the song means God cannot be stopped. Nobody can stop God. Nobody can stop the works of God. What God has started to do in your life, he says, he will finish it. That good thing. He who began a good thing in our lives is faithful to complete it and he is unstoppable. Nothing can stop him from blessing you, from lifting you up, from healing you, from transforming your life. He is unstoppable. Let us thank him this morning. That Lord, I thank you that your good works cannot be stopped. Your deliverance, your healing, your transformation, your provision, miracles, uh, signs and wonders, uh, they cannot be stopped. Nobody can stop you, oh God. Nobody can hinder you, oh God. Nobody, no power, whether in the heavenlies, on the earth, under the earth, wherever, in the parallel universe, in every dimension of the spirit realm, nothing can stop our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name, Father. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Father, our daily bread. Even as you've forgiven us our trespasses. Thank you, Father. You will not lead us into temptation. You have delivered us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, as we begin to round up, when we go back to Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. When Jesus knelt to the cross. All the handwritings and the ordinances that were against us, that were hostile to us. When he nailed those certificates and legal demands on the cross. The Bible says, when he completely removed these things, he disarmed, he spoiled the principalities and the powers. He made a sure of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. He disarmed them. But you know, sometimes they want to pretend that they are still armed. I want you to begin to speak into your day that in this day, I declare the word of God in Colossians 2.15. The principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, witchcraft coverings, warlocks, uh, gatherings of spiritists uh, and evil ordinances. Uh, they have been disarmed. Uh, Jesus has spoilt them. He has disarmed them concerning my life, uh, concerning the 
church of God uh, concerning our households. Uh, they are disarmed uh, wherever they are coming from. Uh, whatever is the name uh, of that principality. Whatever is the name uh, of that power. Whatever is the name uh, of that spiritual ruler of wickedness. Uh, spiritual wickedness uh, in high places. Uh, whatever is their name. They have been disarmed concerning us. They have no jurisdiction over us. They have no power over us. They are not permitted to touch us or to touch anything that concerns us. They cannot come against our families. They cannot come against our children. They cannot come against anything we own that God has given us. They cannot come against anything that is a blessing to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to speak. Lord, I thank you. Wherever I go, wherever the soul of my feet shall tread, I possess that land and and the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, the ordinances of Satan, they are disarmed. Uh, this witchcraft coven operating against my life, uh, they are disarmed. Uh, the warlocks are disarmed. Uh, the gatherings of wickedness are disarmed uh, because the Bible said uh, they shall surely gather, but because they have not gathered by me, they will fall for your sakes. Uh, therefore, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, wherever, Lord, uh, Satan would have mounted up resistance against us, uh, we remind them they are disarmed this morning. They are disarmed this morning. They have no hand over us. They have no hand over us. They are disarmed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We will lift him high. Jesus has given us victory. We will lift him higher. Jehovah, he will lift him higher. Psalm 118 from verse 15, the Bible said, this is, a, a, this is talking about you and I, child of God. It's talking about us. It says the sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. We will not die, but live and declare the works and recount the illustrious acts of the Lord. Open to us the temple gates of righteousness. We shall enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. We will give thanks to you, O God, for you have heard our prayers and answered us. And you have become our salvation, our rescuer and our savior in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. I want you to just thank him as we begin to round up that in your camp, in your house, there is joyful shouting. And you know, as you leave this prayer line, you will do it by faith. You will sing and dance and shout by faith. Oh, Rabba Sekeleba, the sound of joyful shouting is in our camp for the right hand of God has done it. He has heard our prayers. You are dancing child of God because the gates of righteousness have been opened unto you. You are going into this day through a specific gate, a gate that only yields testimonies, a gate that yields the goodness of God in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And